All right, so we're going to talk about trade setups at fail. Um, and uh, this is something that uh, I've incorporated in, into my own style and, and what we teach years ago because I got tired of getting caught in such setups. So I studied them uh, enthusiastically and said, how can I incorporate these kind of these kind of failures. So that's what we're going to talk about, incorporating that in, into uh, trading style or method. But before we get going, just can you guys let me know how how many of you actually here um, trade actually trade futures uh, versus stocks? You know, if you're trading futures, give me a one. If you're trading stocks, give me a two. Maybe some of you trade three, but you know, most most people will be uh, focused either on one or the other. Futures one. Peter's Peter's all over. He does both. It's great, and uh, I, I'm I'm agreeing with that. I mean, uh, while it's good to focus, sometimes one market versus another um, provides better opportunities. So, you, you know, you really don't have to be narrowed down to a, a single choice. A lot of traders like uh, the narrowed focus of of futures versus stocks, but it's always you know what. Um, you can always trade both or trade one versus the other that's going to present a better opportunity. Some of you might even trade Forex, which is another, you know, currents, currencies, we're going to, you know, what we're talking about today is applicable to currency futures, but anything that we're going to look at can be applied to any tradable, any tradable instrument. And that has been my focus over the years is to say what, whatever I'm going to trade uh, is the method applicable to anything um, because once you see that it's universal uh, I believe you gain confidence in it you know it's it's not about this primarily only uh, applies to a single market and we all know since everybody in here is trading different markets we all know that setups can and do fail um, so how do, how do we incorporate that in, into our style regardless of, of what we're trading um, let me ask you something, kind of a, you know, a rhetorical or obvious question, but how many of you would rather be self-reliant with a, a trading style that you just did what you did on your own each day to day, or would you rather rely on, say, me or, or somebody else to tell you what to do on a day-to-day -day basis, give you guidance, you know, this, this is the point to trade, press the button, and this is what you should trade. Kevin wants to do it on his own. Maybe the rest of you think, oh, right, right. You know, any anybody, guidance is okay. That's where we all start, Carlos. Right? We all we all start with guidance. That's what education is about. But our, our goal is to be self-reliant and make our own decisions. You know, probably many of you in here have have, have or do run your own business as I, I did in the past and you cannot run a business uh, always needing guidance on a day-to-day on -day basis as, as what to do. When it comes to the markets, somebody can maybe point you in a direction that you might not be looking at or point something out. That, that's great because um, the markets are, are vast. Um, you know, so, so that can be a help. But in the end, we all want to make our own decisions as to when to press that button and, and what risk we're going to take on what and when. Right? So let's get into that because what I'm going to what I want to share with you is a foundation for doing that. And if you you know you look at what I'm going to tell you, assimilate it into what you're doing, regardless of what you trade, it's going to put the odds on your side. You know, without looking at a huge amount of in, information to you know to become overwhelmed about that. So before we get started. Disclaimer, you can lose money doing this. Um, there's risk in, involved in, in the markets. Um, you know, with what I'm going to show you, we're not going to have the time to talk about it today. Uh, but whatever you do, money management, right, calculated risk is the key to not only survival, but success in, in doing this. Um, there are many that come to the markets that could be successful but never made it because of a lack of money management. Right? 
So there is risk. You can lose money. Um, whatever risk you're going to take, make sure it's a calculated risk so that you survive the learning curve. And after that, the day-to-day, -day because, you know, anybody at any point in time can blow up an account um, taking on too large a position. A little bit about me. Uh, Roly mentioned uh, about Pristine. Uh, I did win six trading challenges at, at the Trader Expos. Um, Pristine, this year is 20 years that we've been uh, ed educating individuals, as it says, hedge fund managers. You know, we've had market makers come to our classes, specialists. Um, this is people that, that never owned a stock, and, and there are many, many of our competitors out there that have taken classes and have started their own businesses or have become money managers themselves, uh, which is a testament to Pristine and, and what it teaches and how long it's been doing this. Um, last two years, 2012, 2013, best voted, best trading education by those of you that, that, that have voted on that, and that was at um, Trading, Trading Planet. Uh, those are three books that, that, I've, that I've authored. Uh, you might want to check them out. They're available on, on Amazon. You know, a lot of great information there. Recognized as a leader in the industry, stocks, commodities, barons, CBS News, this is Lightspeed, and you can read the rest, of course, Trading Pub right there. Uh, we've been at Trading Pub before as a contributor, and we appreciate being invited uh, back to do that. Now, years ago, I, I started out, and I think many, many of us start out being touched by, by this type of analysis at, at some point, because there's a tendency when you don't know anything about the markets to think that it has to be complicated uh, to succeed in it. Um, or you need to predict right, what's going to happen. And to a, certain ex to a certain extent, we do have to predict um, you know, what's going to happen poss you know, when we talk about futures trading and intraday trading, what's going to happen in the next few minutes or you know, over the next half hour, hour, or to tomorrow to an extent when we, when we start the trading day. We have to develop a bias. Uh, but this type of analysis... As I said, I did study this many, many years ago. You know, it, it, it's it's interesting. Um, you know, to think that you might be able to predict, and at times it was very predictive. You know, to to project as to what's going to happen next week at, at some point in time, or this is a particular turning point um, in, in the markets. Um, but it became so confusing uh, to do that that you know I said, you know, this just this doesn't do it for me. Um, you know, I'm confused. I'm certainly not making money. Um, I had to move on to to other other things, and and many of us uh, move toward you know, the next step where we might start at at this step. Um, and maybe you were lucky enough to avoid the more esoteric types of, of analysis with the Elliott waves and, and, and the GANs and, and the Fibonacci's and, and, and so on. Um, but this is you know, what I call the, the simpler, right? This is the simpler technical analysis. And we're drawn to this as well because, again, the, the idea of predicting and, and, and uh, you know, knowing where certain turning points are going to be or where support and, and resistance is going to be based on various measurements or, or drawing lines. And, you know, you know, this point, it put enough lines and moving averages on, on a chart and you know, you'll, you'll catch the prices. And, uh, you know, you can show somebody, oh, look how it hit that line. Um, and, and, and it turned right there. Um, you know, but again, this turned into being what I call a spaghetti screen. And as I went through this, and I had my trend lines on and my various moving averages and possibly the Bollinger Bands and certainly a stochastic and MACD, they're widely followed um, in indicators that would suggest, you know, the markets are or whatever you're trading is overbought or whether it's oversold, which would suggest, well, here's a turning point. But then there were times where, hey, 
it said it was overbought, but it didn't pull back and it kept going up. So how do you how do you deal with that? You know, through this methodology. Well, I know what I did, what a lot of people do is, well, let me try a different oscillator or let me change the settings on that particular oscillator. And, and now I've gotten it to line up with oversold and there's the turning point. So that, that should work again in the future. But then when it doesn't get oversold and, and it keeps going up, well, what is that about? Why did that happen? Uh, wrong settings, wrong indicator, um, wrong combination of indicators. Uh, did I draw the lines in the wrong place? These were all questions that were going through my mind years ago. Um, for, for example, uh, and this is a question that comes up when the discussion of, of trend lines come up. Well, do I draw from the tails? Or do, should I draw from the closing prices? You know, does that make a, a more reliable um, trend line? middle of the screen from Brad. If you click the X on it, Nick, you can you can remove it. There's a little X at the top right. And you can remove that for yourself. Okay. So as as going through my learning process um, and having all of these various lines, Bollinger bands, Fibonacci retracements, moving averages, oscillators, and so on. Um, I reached my saturation point of mass confusion and said, you know what, this stuff doesn't work. Okay. I've tried in earnest to figure it out. I've even spent time writing my own indicators. You know, I think, well, I can come up with a better mousetrap. Well, that didn't, that didn't work either. So in the end, the answer was, remove it all. Let's just get rid of it because it just doesn't work. Let's get back to basics here. It says whatever the news is, whatever's going on, let's define where there's support and where's resistance. What's the trend? And, and once we can determine that within at least one particular time frame. We've got a good start of moving it in, in the right direction. And so it says, we, let's keep it simple, stupid. Right? Rather, rather than having all of this noise, if you will, um, let's just remove that stuff and, and follow some basic things and learn how to put that together um, to, and put some basic price patterns uh, at work to figure this all out. Now, when I looked at the price patterns, like probably most of you, you know, I, I thought of, you know, the head and shoulders tops, um, pendants, flags, uh, diff different, different types of, of patterns that might have meaning as to what's going to happen. Peter's saying, what we need is just one simple indicator that will help each of us and every one of us. Well, Peter, that's what I'm going to give you today. Not necessarily in the form of an indicator, but in the form of a, a method of interpretation. Um, now, as I, I looked at these, the, these patterns, what, what hit home for me was, you know, being a reflection of what other traders were thinking. Um, and and what, drove, what drove that thought into me was, you know, my own expectations, thoughts, and, and feelings within a, a particular trade at a particular moment in time. And probably the, the, most, um, the, the most impact uh, of that feeling and reflection of, of thoughts and emotions was at a point where prices would go in the direction I didn't think they would. I don't know how many of you have gotten into that particular situation, but have you ever been in a situation where you got into a position, it didn't work, maybe you had to stop, maybe you didn't, but you didn't get out, and you held on to it 
and you kept thinking it'll turn around or it's going to stop going down here and it just kept going it kept going lower and lower and at some point you hit that button with such ultimate certainty certainty that prices were going to continue to go down and you, you virtually sold the low of the move anybody ever experienced that just give me a one if you haven't give me a two all right right you know we I think we've all we've all been there oh, I got one two one two there you are one lucky person <laughs> or not tell not being honest with us but anyway you you know what you must have had a good mentor if you you know and and followed your rules if that didn't happen but um, when you get into that situation you know there's that that uh, feeling in the pit of your stomach that some like somebody just kicked you there you know and it's it's terrible and it's like how do I avoid that well of course education trading plan discipline so on and so forth which you all know um, but again the the idea that these patterns reflect what others are thinking um, just made those those pictures much more meaningful to me you know uh, you know so understanding the chart if you will um, you know, we, we look at a particular price pattern but you know for me I, I wanted to think like all right I understood this picture um, gave me more confidence in what I was doing right? so I needed to define what those pictures were buying selling uncertainty uh, then look at the trend is you know where these pictures where these pictures are happening it's going to increase the odds of follow-through and in other words you could learn different candlestick patterns um, whether it's Haramis or dark, dark cloud covers or piercing patterns or morning stars, whatever they might be. And we all know that they don't necessarily follow through as they suggest they would or the way they've been explained. And, you know, the majority of time when they don't is just because they're not in alignment with a trend in support and resistance. And as I said, money management, that's the key. When we talk about trading psychology, right, you have to incorporate money management because if you don't, your your mindset will never be correct. It's just it's just not possible because you know you always, you always know that um, you know you're you're playing with disaster. And you know as as you do this and it comes together, I mean that's what builds the confidence. You know, and then the patience and discipline becomes you know, your your job. So this is that foundation that I'm talking about. We determine reference points, and right? I call them reference points. Well, where, where's their support? And I say, you know, I have demand here. Another, another way of using words and understanding what's happening on the chart is that at that area of support, there are buyers. There's demand there. Um, that demand should increase at areas called support, and prices should stabilize and begin to turn up from there. At resistance, there's that that supply there. Um, <clears throat> so then we need to determine what's the trend. Is it up, down, is it sideways? Determine if there's a void. Now, a, a void is a term that I created to explain. Um, there's there's nothing there to the left. One of the questions that I asked myself uh, many years ago was, why is it that prices trend when they do? Why it is a particular setup that looks like the other setup, one trend and one doesn't? What increases the probability of prices trending? Well, if their support and resistance is where there's demand and supply and there's no consolidation, there's no turning points over there to the left, well, then there's no reference point over there for other trade traders to put out bids to buy right, based, based on the chart or put out offers right, where there's resistance. Now that, when that's the case, there's a greater probability of prices trending. So we need to determine right, if there's a price pattern in alignment with our bias based on this analysis. And that's what we're going to put together. As I said, the location of these patterns, they're going to be key putting the odds in your favor. What is support? What's resistance? Here, 
And this is basic stuff, but it's powerful stuff when you put this all together. Um, we have a few rules, basic rules. These are levels. They're not fixed prices. Um, and many of us, especially when we're starting out, we want to know, you know, exact points. And, and that's, you know, what drawing these trend lines are about, you know, predicting turning points and the, and the Fibonacci's are about um, a predict, predicting these areas, you know, within decimal points uh, uh, of where a turn should be. Um, but it, it, it just doesn't work that way. You'll, you know, you'll discover that as you do this for a while. They're areas, so they, they don't have to hold exactly. Sometimes they do, especially, um, say, in the ES futures market. You know, there's a very technical market. So, you know, areas of support and resistance can hold within a few ticks. But as prices come past those areas, I want to think, I want to be a buyer down there. That's where the buyers were before. You know, they should show up again. So that's going to be my bias, to be a buyer down in those areas. And if they were sellers there once before, what was support becomes resistance. Well, I'm thinking I want to be a seller over there because prices should decline from that point again. Right? Simple, but it works. No lines. No moving averages needed to determine this. Um, really simple, it works, very difficult to get confused. And so when prices are trending right, up and, and I see a, a prior high, my bias is, well, if prices could exceed that point, I want to be a buyer when prices pull back to that point. I want to be a buyer here. As prices move back up, you notice I didn't mark this as resistance. Why do you think I didn't mark this as, as resistance? Is it is it resistance? What do you guys think? Is it resistance? Yes, no? Give me a one for resistance, two, no. Yeah, prices are trending up. See this is this is this is different opinions, which is the normal. Um, let me tell you, every turning point that prices pull back from an area like this, we could say, yes, it is resistance, but is, is it an area of significant resistance? So when, and, and, th and this is a hang-up that many will have. First of all, they'll have a hang-up buying the pullback because it looks negative at that time, but the trend is up, and this is where the, buyer, the buyers are and should show up. Will it, will it exceed the old high? which is some form of resistance, but because the trend is up, we have to discount it as saying, well, the bigger picture, the trend, should overcome that area. Now, do we know that prices can get above it? No. That's the uncertainty that comes with trading, and, that, and that's why any of the presenters that come in here to the trading pub will tell you that this is an odds game. It's about probabilities. There's, there's no ultimate certainty to know what's going to happen, yet a lot of the analysis techniques try to do exactly that. <coughs> okay. So the assumption is because of the trend that it will overcome that area. And so we're going to buy pullbacks to support. We're going to assume that it's going to go through here. And then we're going to see what's going to happen. We're going to manage. And we're going to continue to do that. Every time it pulls back to support, we're going to be a buyer. Now, at some point, it's going to stop going up. All, trend, all trends at some point stop going higher. Now, just for the sake of time, when I say, what, what, what happened over here? This question. Well, what, what I would be showing you, what we would show you in a class and teaching you about um, these analysis techniques and method is, how do I determine when momentum is slowing down? And rather than use an oscillator or some indicator, what we need to do is just look at the moves. Right? Look at the thrusts, if you will. Moved well above the prior high. Moved well above the prior high. And then the momentum stalled. Moved slightly above the prior high. And then the momentum stalled. 
So what's happening here is momentum is beginning to stall or slow down. It doesn't mean that the trend has changed, and it hasn't. Sometimes momentum stalls and then it increases again. And we want to recognize when that, that is happening. Now, where this is in relation to the bigger picture, what's over to the left, will increase the odds of whether it's a meaningful stall in momentum. Now, as it pulls back to support again, the question is, well, do I want to be a buyer now? I'll tell you yes, right? because this is what we call an area of major support, as it's come down to the low prior to the higher high. There's going to be buyers there again. Will it exceed the old high? Based on what we've discussed here on this slide, it would suggest not, but we really don't know. But there's still going to be buyers down here. So I want to be a buyer down there on that pullback. The trend at some point is going to break. And we have to begin to change our bias. So once prices push down below what I refer to as, as major support, and they pull back, and odds are they're probably going to pull back to that next that next low. That's typically what happens. And then they're going to retrace back up here. Well, the question is, do I want to be a seller up there? I do. Right? But the trend has been broken, and what was re support should become resistance. That's the theory. Yeah, I want to be a seller here. And, and now, this low here, that's created some new support, but now that the trend has changed, I have to discount that. It's the only way I can risk my money here, right? And because I have to make some assumptions that prices can at least come down to here and ideally overcome it and keep going lower at that point. That, that's what trading retracements is about, with, and in this case, a downtrend. What about when the trend is extended? Essentially what I'm explaining to you here is three ways of entering a position. It's in an uptrend. I'm going to be a buyer on pullbacks to support. And we haven't talked about buying breakouts. So that would be another way. It's a different type of correction. It could be in a downtrend and we will sell retracements to where there's resistance. And at other times, prices will accelerate. And when prices accelerate to the downside, and they reach a new area or a lower area of support, I want to be a buyer down there. Right, the acceleration part is key. And as it gets extended, or what we call a climactic move to the downside, but now when it, it reaches a, that older level of support, my bias is, well, I want to be a buyer down here. We saw something similar to that today as, as the markets moved lower, as they accelerated to the downside this morning. And they stabilized. They made a little bit of a lower low. You go and look at those charts and we're talking about the equity minis. They made a little bit of a lower low where, if we turn this upside down, it looked like this, right? meaning it made a slightly lower low. I'm saying reverse this where you would have saw the momentum slow down and then prices retraced back up again at that point. Now we have a couple of choices when prices reach our reference points. Prices are moving lower toward an area of support within an uptrend or accelerating lower Right, climactic move to the downside towards support. We have a, two, two choices, in my opinion. I can either place a bid down there and, and buy it. And you could do that as long as you have some money management incorporated in, in, into your plan. You could do that and say, well, if it goes down there and it keeps going, I'll, I'll get out if it continues to move lower. Or I can look for a price pattern that give some confirmation of, of that area uh, as a turning point when it's gotten down there. Uh, it happens in a, in a couple of ways. And this you know, on the left side here is what I'm calling normal or obvious reversals. And, and we could turn these upside down for buy setups. And 
these are these are fine when, when they happen but you know it sometimes especially with the one on the upper left here where the range narrows and it begins to turn um, you know sometimes it begins to turn and it flips right back up again and and if you have your stop up above here it'll stop you out and then reverse it ever happened to anybody you ever get in where the, you know you get this little reversal pattern this narrow uh, narrow body bar or narrow range bar and it begins to turn lower and then it, it flips right up it hits your stop and boom right back down and you're like damn it I had it nailed I had it, it hit my stop and now it's and now it's going lower well it's happened to me too right? yeah, exactly you know and it's like shoot well from those experiences I said you know what if I can catch this kind of a pattern where somebody else got tagged like that, you know, that little shakeout you know, should increase the odds of that not happening to me most of the time. And sometimes it is a shakeout and a shakeout, but you know what? Nothing we can do about that. Well, if I can incorporate these kind of situations that I'm calling potent reversals or shocked expectations, you know, especially like here in the middle, this little breakout failure, BOF, well, what's the odds of it's now starting to move down and coming back up and hitting my stop if it's up here? My experience is that it's it's lower. So if I can find situations like this, you know, it just increases my confidence level. And if I can find this at resistance within a downtrend, odds are it's going down here to take out the low. That's my assumption. And that's that's a trade setup that I like. And, you know, these kind of situations I'm like, well, I you know, it's kinda of like, okay, some gotcha, somebody somebody got caught. And essentially that's the failure that I'm looking for. I wanna see the failure where somebody got caught the way I got caught many, many times. And every once in a while it, it still does happen. It's unavoidable. But when I can find these patterns when they do occur, um, it's great. You know, little breakout failure right the bottom, in the bottom middle there. You know, here it, it, it looks like it's stabilizing. It, it's been moving down. There's that stabilization. You know, the scalpers come in and, okay, it's going to bounce there. Gotcha. Back down. Right? And the next area of support is even lower. So the probability of it continuing to go down is good. So I, I'm looking for that. You know, downside little shakeouts and they happen in different ways um, and this is a great example on the on the, uh, the right here the right side depending on the time frame that you're looking at it can look like any of these something that you need to to realize is that as you change time frames and that's a choice that you make um, is not a right or wrong it's a choice it could look like any one of these depending on the on your time frame you know, a smaller time frame will look like the bottom the bottom right and shorter time frame will look like the upper right because there's more information so you're you're breaking up the data and right? so the thing to understand is there's no perfect time frame but we need to understand that all of these pictures mean the same thing right? so I don't have to look at you know eight different time frames or four different time frames I mean just to understand this type of little shakeout or reversal well, those are at turning points. Sometimes, <clears throat> like you miss the turning point. Okay, that'll happen. That'll happen too. Um, so we need a way of saying, well, how do I get on board? What we'll call it a continuation setup. Now, as, you, as prices moved up here, right, so this means wide range bar, bullish wide range bar. That's our acronym for a. Uh, positive or, or bullish wide range bar and prices moved up now yeah I missed the turn here but I've determined that you know this is either climactic to the downside and it's got room to go up or it's in an uptrend and it's pulled back and I missed the turning point well, how do I get on board well I want to see this little what I'll call a correction bar uh, if you've been in some of my workshops I'm gonna refer them to as a money bar because they're so they're so reliable but in essence what I'm looking for is an initial move initial move stalls it tries to go down and it pops right back up again and th and this tells me that there are other traders 
that are placing bids here, there's strong demand because the belief is that prices are going to continue to go higher. And that and that's my picture. That that tells me that, it communicates that to me. That allows me to get on board right, after the move has already occurred. Sometimes it happens like this, looks a little bit different. Um, and here's an example of what we looked at in the prior slide where prices had been going up um, and then reversed back down again. In other words, you know, here was a bullish bar that turned into what I'll call a topping tail bar. And these within a downtrend give me my entry point um, under that low. Now let's look at a few examples here. So as I, I'm reading, reading the charts, and I see this occur. I'm like, ah, somebody got caught buying that break to new highs. That's going to increase selling or, or supply to come in potentially. Unless this bar is totally ignored, right, those traders that bought are now going to want to sell because they don't want to incur big losses. So we continue to read. And here, you, know, you see, it tried to go up right back down again. Sellers are in control. And now, how do I get on board? Well, here's the, here's the break. As we looked at on that line chart, after the break, I want to sell where the supply is, up near that resistance area. And there's the shock. Price has started to break out. You never buy breakout in, into resistance. Right? That's not going to work. If it does, it's going to be very few and far between. And then it reversed right back down again. There's the shock. So now I want to get on board when it breaks those lows and then manage from there. Right? Say so shock bar patterns catch traders on the wrong side. Why would somebody buy this breakout here? I don't know. Right? There, are, there are styles and methods that I don't use, I don't understand. I just know when I look at the chart what this means to me in relation to what happened to the left there. So I place a trade when it breaks there. I put a stop up here and I wait to see what's going to happen. My assumption is it'll break that low in a situation like this. So the location, right, the location of these candle patterns, right, and the trend with the support with resistance. And if there isn't resistance, or say the lack thereof, and looking at multiple time frames, that, that's the key to putting the odds on your side a, as a price pattern trader. So on this slide, what we're looking at here, here's the lower, the, this is the lower time frame, and prices are trending down. Well, here, prices broke down under the prior low. See the star here? That's the same place as the star on my higher time frame. Now, you can probably figure out what the time frames are here, but that's not important. Right? Um, what's important is the time frames that you choose, meaning what is your higher time frame and what are you using for your lower time frame. And what we want to take away from this slide is that as prices come down to the low and the higher time frame, even though they're trending down in the lower time frame, Odds are this breakdown is going to fail. So once I get the reversal, I can enter. You say, well, Greg, why would you enter when this resistance is over here? Well, because it's the lower time frame and it's at an area of major support. In the higher time frame, and the big picture suggests does it, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it suggests that that high can be overcome because of the location of where this is occurring, especially after a breakdown has failed. Right? Those traders that got caught here, that's going to help increase the demand. Right? Those that are short, buy to cover. Those that want to get long, buy to get long. Together, they increase demand, and that increases the odds of overcoming that supply. Is an ex you know example in the other direction. Higher time frame prices are coming up to the old high. Lower time frame, it tries to break out, slam back down. Somebody got caught. Right? That that that's my picture. That says, hey, it's it's time. Right? Big time frame says this is where the supply is. Right? 
somebody got caught on the wrong side that maybe they weren't aware, maybe they didn't care, um, but they got caught and now on a lower time frame, it should continue to move lower. Here, here's an example, right? This is in the ES contract yesterday. And this is how we would utilize this in trading futures. Now, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be ES, could be the NQs, it, it, it could be the British pound, whatever, whatever you trade, it, does, it doesn't make a difference. It's, you know, the idea, the concept is universal. As prices were moving down, it then began to accelerate into this prior support area. Now, once they are coming down there, right, our bias begins to change to, well, while prices are moving down, they should begin to stabilize here and potentially move up. So I start looking for patterns in a smaller time frame that confirm that bias. And you can see this little, little point here where prices stabilize, they broke down, and they came right back up again. And we didn't talk about retest patterns, but here we got a little retest of the low. That makes it e even a higher probability when you get these little retests that it's going to move up from that point because of where it is within the higher time frame. Now, look right over here. See this little reversal here? If you've entered down here and if prices begin to move up and you see that red bar, I know what I'm thinking. It's like, oh boy. And I know I'm close, but maybe not close enough and it's going to come down and, you know, it's going to take out the low. Well, at that point, you know, it's just like, okay, hold your breath there, Greg. Let's see what's going to happen. You know, the odds are on your side. When I see it reverse right back up again on the next bar, it's like, all right, I got it nailed. It's it. Right? The buyers stepped up. The bidders were down there on the pullback. That what we call a 180 type reversal of that red bar ignored confirms the big picture bias. It should start moving up. Well, it did that. Notice the little bottoming tail right there. Right there. Right? Another little confirmation signal. Well, once it clears this little congestion, well, there should be buyers here on the pullback again. So we then continue with the analysis from our line chart. And we're just using candles now. It took out the resistance, that should become support. Look for price patterns, candles, that's that confirm that area and the reversal. Right? Notice the red bar that said, hey, this thing's going lower right here. And it reverses right back up again. And from there you you know you manage. As it as it comes up toward an area of resistance, the odds are that it's going to stall. What do you do? Take your money, take some of your money, trail stop. You know, that's, you know, manage the trade at that point according to your trading plan. All right, since, since our, we're talking here and our focus is on, on futures, there's one inf piece of information, something a little more subjective uh, that comes in real handy and useful when we're talking about trading futures, especially the equity e-minis. Those are called trader pivot lines. Not a pivot like a turning point, but it's a line on a chart that's based on the prior day's um, high, low, and close. And the nice thing about these, unlike, say, a, a moving average that the location changes depending on, the, on your time frame, is that regardless of the time frame that you're using, or the type of chart you're using, meaning it could be a time-based chart, it could be an activity chart like a tick chart, they're all in the same place. So everybody that's looking at, at these, they're looking at the same area uh, for a probable turning point. So as prices move down within a downtrend, there's going to be sellers at that trader pivot line. And then as it moves down toward the next line, right, there should be buyers down there. But as we discussed, look over to the left and see what see what's over there. Now, notice this. Is that bottoming tail down there? That's a little gotcha setup. Now, if this is in an area of support, right, we've, we've looked at our higher time frame. When we see this, 
Unless notice how the price has accelerated here. That's a signal or entry point there. That little gotcha setup, that little break under the lows and reversal. Right? There's a pivot line there. Look over to the left, the way I explained to you putting it all together. You know, that's a trade setup that puts the odds on your side and should put the money in your pocket. Right? Then man manage it from there. Now, again, this is how we utilize looking at the price patterns. Look at that big green candle there. Even notice it took out the low and reversed back up again. That little shakeout, I don't know, that's just, hey, this thing's going up. And this could be a situation where, you know what, with this little consolidation there, maybe we we would have entered here, but we didn't look at some other information. But let's assume, you know, for this lesson here, that we actually entered here and we got caught because of this big red bar, this reversal bar here that said this was going to go up. Well, the bar fails. So we take that information, even though we may, we would have lost some money, right? we take that information and use it to our advantage. Well, if, if that big bar can fail, well, that tells me that there's some big supply and sellers are in control. Well, when it comes back up into that resistance and that pivot line, that trader pivot line, I see that topping tail. Well, that gives me an entry point and from there, manage. Now, this is what I call a morning gap trader setup. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen all, all the time, but uh, you know it, it's relatively common. And what I look for is where prices, you know, they 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 start to move to in this case to the downside. In other words, there's a little break lower, and it immediately reverses back up again. I don't call it the morning the morning trap, and it usually happens at the start of trading. Um, so there's there's an attempt to move in one direction and it immediately reverses back up in the other direction. Now, again, put together everything that I've talked about here in 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 alignment to put it together. Right? One of the things that you have to realize is that you know an individual concept in of itself can be a starting point for a trade, but it's not the reason to press the button without taking into consideration the other the other concepts. What increases your odds is putting it all together, not just you know one bar right, or one you know set of bars. As like I said, you know, when you learn about candlesticks and you think about those candlestick names, dark cloud covers, morning stars, so on and so forth, right? Without the bigger picture and support, resistance, and trend, right, they're no more reliable than any, than anything else. And so there's a, another morning trap setup. It looked like it was going lower, and it dips down and immediately reverses right back up again. And and you see, I have the the, the trader pivot lines on there. Well, again, if the big picture analysis, in this case, says it's going to go higher, well, that line is just a subjective line on the chart. Right? So there, there are times where just like a, uh, you might have a moving average on a chart um, or something else that you're looking at, you know, you, you need to discount that. The same way that we discount a prior high within an uptrend, there are times where I mean, like a trader pivot line, we need to discount that, you know, because our other analysis suggests that prices can go through it. So what do we want to do here? Well, trading plan, in essence, is a check it's a checklist. Um, we don't want to overcomplicate the analysis that that we're using. Um, you know, having charts with lots of indicators and colors and so on might look impressive, but not necessarily going to make you money. So let's not overcomplicate things. Um, let's look at 
what the trend is and, and the, t the time frames that, that you're going to choose. And I'm not telling you what, what to use here. Um, now, you have to decide for yourself, and there's no right, there's no right or wrong, uh, but pick a, pick a higher time frame and look at where support is, what resistance, where resistance is, where the trend is, because now you know you're going to determine what the odds are of prices moving in one direction or the other and where, and where the turning points are going to be. And then your job is to wait for a price pattern in a lo lower time frame of choice. Um, that could be a five minute, it could be a two minute. Uh, if, you're, if you're a swing trader, um, it could be the weekly and, and the daily chart. Right? So it, it, it applies to you know, whatever style of trading you want to apply it to, you know, but you do have to decide where your analysis is going to be, what's it going to be based on. And then you strike, press the button when the time is right. When it all when it all comes together, then you want to you want to manage it according to your plan. When I say manage, um, you know, as prices begin to move up, um, do you do you allow them to pull back against you? Because you know a significant area of, of resistance is, is at a higher level. Right? That's a reasonable thing to do. But how are you going to do that? Well. One of the things you do is, is let it pull back, right? let it pivot, right? meaning as it pulls back several bars and then it begins to move up right? and begins to pivot. And we call that, you know, here, here's a, a bar with higher low bars to the left and the right um, and it begins to move up from there. We can then begin to trail or stop. That's one way of, of managing the trade. Um, another way of, of, of managing and uh, one of the things that, that is, is done uh, in our, our trading rooms is that you'll see a moderator say, um, well, I'm going, I'm going to take part of my profit, and there you'll hear them say at 1R, meaning I've, I've risked X amount of money, and once I've gained right, that, that amount of money, if they've, if they've risked $500, and when prices have moved up where they have a $500 profit, right, they've made 1R, Right, they'll exit half of the trade and then bring up their stop to break even on the on the other half or slightly positive right, with the assumption that prices continue to move low higher. So you have to have a trading plan. Not, o not only as to determining what we've discussed right, and where you get where you're going to get in, but how you're going to manage the trade from that point. Right. So say so what do you what do you what are you gonna what to do now? Well in these trading pub, pub events, and we've done that, you know what, you guys and gals, you know, you get, you get offered many things, great, great values to different services from, from different educational companies, and you can, you can make the decision um, to partake in whatever that offer is. Well, so as I came here today, I'm going to say, well, what should I, what should I offer, you know, the attendees here at Trading Club? And you know what I thought to myself, you know what, you guys get so many offers, you know, for today, what I'm going to offer you is to just get to know Pristine better, meaning come in and register in what we call the community. There's a lot of free, free information there, different things you can read, uh, what we call 60 second lessons, um, where you can, wa you can watch them, They're not 60 seconds, they might be two, three, four minutes or whatever on, 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 different, on different subjects. Um, and go in there and, and, and check out those free services. Um, you know, we do, we do free workshops, uh, you know, several times, several times a week. So come into those free workshops. In other words, come into Pristine and see what we're about. Read what's in the community. Come into the free workshops. See if something hits home with you that it says, you know what, this stuff makes sense to me. I think I want I want to learn more about what Pristine does and what they have to offer. Um, so get to, get to know us. Um, if you like that, what I would say is at that at some point in time, you will contact support or a counselor. Um, that could that could be 
two weeks from now, it could be a month from now. And what I would say is, if that's interest to you, what we do, well, at that, at that point in time, you can take 20% off anything that, you know, any of the classes at that time. But today, for today, I'm not offering anything other, other than our free services and to get to know us um, in, in the community um, and in, in the free workshops. Uh, come in and find out what we're about and see if it interests you. And then at some point in time, you know, you might decide that uh, you know, this, 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 is, this type of education is, is for me. I was just reminded, you know what, we, we also, I didn't mention, uh, you know, we have a couple of newsletters. Um, one is, is focused on, on swing setups. The other one is on gap setups in, in the morning. Um, those are paid for services. Um, you know, we had a special that went out last week. If you, if you want to uh, consider that as, as, as a way of, uh, you know, learning more about that, you know, it was like, you know, it, it, it was a ridiculous price, but anyway, if somebody wants to drop the link in, in for that, you know, you might want to subscribe and find out more about those, those that newsletter special, um, but and come in and, you know, get into the community, come into the free workshops, um, and see, and see what that's all, all about and what we do. And uh, the last thing, and then I'm, I'm happy to take your questions. Um, we do have a preferred broker at Pristine, and I will tell you, I, I am a registered uh, person person there. Um, but we do give discounts for clients over there. I, I do uh, coaching sessions. I actually have one tonight where we'll spend about an hour, to, usually an hour and a half, reviewing uh, the broader markets, uh, different markets of interest, uh, stocks, uh, some market internals, um, a Q and A on trades that uh, they they've done. You know, we cover all that as part of uh, the service over there when opening up an account over at uh, at Lightspeed. Right? So you can check that out as well. Okay, guys, if you have questions on what I've covered, um, you know, now's the time to to put them out there. Okay, hi, uh, Greg. This is Raleigh. I've got a couple of questions I'd like to kick off with, and and that is, once again, thank you for just a fascinating discussion, and I really like the way that you shared that evolution, but, and I think we've all gone through that, where we had a screen that was so busy, <laughs> it paralyzed us from making a decision to taking a very clean approach towards looking at the market with that emphasis on support and resistance. But from your perspective, are there any favorite markets that you like to, that, that you like to trade, Greg? Um, you know, Raleigh, that's a it's a great question, and my favorite market is what sets up cleanly, <laughs> that's trending, that provides you know relatively easy setups, and and, and that changes, you know. So, um, uh, quite quite honestly, you know, the the YM E Mini was years ago couple of years ago and I still I still trade it you know but not as actively as before I mean in in the in the past it you know what though that market was great um, and it was to me that my you know mostly because volatility was so much higher and the and the ranges were bigger you know which made right. entry point entry points were like hey this thing could you know it explodes um, you know and then as the volatility contracted the day-to-day -day or intraday opportunities weren't as great, and they didn't, you know, prices didn't move a as much. So it became necessary um, to expand a bit from that that n more narrowed focus. Um, so while I still like the E-minis um, at at the proper time, you know, that I explain here. Well, you know, I also went back to stocks. As, as well, because now you have a broader opportunity, if you will, to you know go out there and cherry pick where more you know there's more of what we talked about as being in in alignment. Whereas when you, when you say I'm going to trade 
you know, the YM and or maybe the, the NQs or, you know, it might be ES for you and say, well, you know, th this is, this is my, my market, my, fa my favorite market. Um, one of the things that you have a tendency to do is to deviate from what you know is the highest probability setups because you're sitting there saying, well, you know what, I want to make money today. I'm looking for the setups and it's just the volatility is not there. You know, things are just chopping around, nothing's happening. And um, it requires, well, trading in itself requires a lot of discipline and patience. But when you have a very narrowed focus, um, it, re it requires even that much more because no when nothing's happening, it's like, what do you do? And then you see other opportunities elsewhere. You know, so sometimes you need to ex expand your focus to what, would be your favorites. How do I gauge no, I resistance so. when the market is at an all-time high? Cam is asking me. I know, Raleigh, if you wanted to add something to what I said. No, I, I was just going to say I thought that was a fantastic answer because that is that is the right answer. But it, it made me kind of wonder, uh, as a trader myself, you know, I'm scanning markets and I'm looking for setup. So as you approach the market, you have multiple screens up. There's multiple markets that you're looking at, and then you're looking for signals or setups that that uh, best suits your needs? Absolutely. Is that a fair way of you know saying what? it? Sure. You know, when I, I look at um, different markets, whether, you know, it, it's the YM, the NQs, or, you know, it could be the, the yen futures or British pound, you know, I start with that, that I'm looking at the daily and weekly chart, even though my focus is going to be intraday and say, well, you know, are things setting up from a higher time frame where, you know, they're at a turning point? you know, pulling back within an uptrend or retracing in a downtrend, you know, to where that supplier demand is, um, and, then, and then bringing that bias intraday. And if, if nothing is there where prices are just chopping sideways and nothing's there, well, why am I going to go and knock my head against the wall, if you will, intraday <laughs> right. where there's no setup from a higher time frame? You know, so don't, don't bother there until it, it sets up where the odds are on your side. Um, and it's the same thing, you know, with stocks problem with stocks, you know, if it's a problem, and it is, it, it, and it can be, is that there are too many things to look at. So it, it requires a discipline of saying that, you know, my focus when it comes to individual stocks is to look at a select few or to narrow that down. You know, there's nothing wrong with using a, a scanner that'll look for the setups that you're looking for. For example, you, you could scan for just wide range bars where, you know, there's been a big move that might continue the next day. You know, so, you know, that, that is a starting point. And, and then narrow it down. What am I, what am I going to look at tomorrow morning? Because if I go, if I start the next day with no plan, I'm going to be all over the place. Or I'm going to probably, as probably as a stock trader especially, I'm going to be looking at who, who knows how many things and probably not getting anything done or placing a trade that probably I shouldn't because I feel like maybe I'm missing out. I, you know, I didn't come prepared. No, good points. Good we, points. Now, Cam's question, you know, how do I gauge resistance when the market is at an all time high? Well, there, there is, there is no resistance. So there, there's no way to say that there's some reference point where, where prices will stop. Um, and, and, and that is one of the primary reasons that we might be looking at stocks and or markets that are making all-time highs because there's nothing to stop them from going up. Now, that being said, you know, where the markets are close to all-time highs, even, even today, you know, they pulled back a little bit. So if we were to look at uh, the NQs or especially even uh, the, the, the YM or, or the, the diamonds, if you're an ETF trader, um, you, you know you know that they've pulled back a bit. So there is some resistance that they've pulled back from a newly established high that'll come into play uh, when the buying picks up again. Whether they can overcome that, well, depends on how they pulled back. So the NQs or the, the QQQ has, has pulled back in, in a, in a uh, let's say, a uh, more predictable or probable way without um, chopping around like, um, like the Dow has. Or some of you might be um, Russell traders, 
uh, trading the, the TF or the IWM if you're trading the the ETFs well they've shown what we you know refer to as relative weakness um, you know and the, the the TFs or the, the IWM came up to a, an old high right had been making new highs and it came up to a prior high and it's and it's pulled back from there um, so you have to incorporate right, multiple time frames understand what, what's going on there and then as an intraday trader say well where are the reference points right, from an intraday point of view? So I, I like to look at the 60-minute chart, you know, from a, a longer time frame uh, perspective intraday. And if we were looking at the Russell or the IWM, you know, you'd see how they pulled back yesterday right to the prior low. And I, you can you can see that on the daily chart, but on the intraday charts, it's just a a nice pullback right into a prior low. You know that that's set up where this is where the buyers are going to be. You move down to your lower time frames and you look for those little breakdown failures, um, that confirmation candles that say, hey, you know, this is the point where um, you know the odds are that prices are going to start to move up from there. And that's where you know you say, well, how we say you take your calculated risk, right? Decide where's where's the stop that would uh, that that trade setup isn't working anymore. Um, how many contracts are you going to trade? How many shares are you going to trade um, based on your, your account and your money management? And from there, you know, you, you enter and you see what happens. Go into management mode and you just see what's, what's, going, to ha what's going to happen next. Um, and, you know, and, and I really, that, that's the essence of, of trading, you know, is, is define what you're going to do. Um, However, you do it, you know, and you guys, have, you know, at Trading Pub, you have a lot of presenters that come in here with different trading styles and 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 methods, and you know what works for for one uh, may not work for somebody else, and you know we all have to find out, you know, as, as I did, the way I explained in the presentation, you know, the indicator methodology didn't work for me, you know, as hard as I tried, and I put, you know, a genuine effort into into that that method, it ju it just didn't work for me. You know, it just became more confusing. And when I removed everything and and just focused on the basics with, you know, the, the patterns as I explained them with multiple time frames and so on, um, you know, the light bulb you know came on. It's like ah, you know, I I you know what I read I read about the basics when I first started out, um, and that. You know, I just came back to that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know what? We I think we all we all come down that that path uh, because this this is what we are exposed to primarily when we come to the markets um, because that's what you know everybody for the most part was exposed to unless you go back and you get into books like. Um, um, title was but like Edwards and McGee that's like a giant you know a giant book with patterns and you know and so on you know and you just you just see the, those bar charts um, you know but as, as you especially as, as the internet developed I mean you're just inundated with so much in, information it's incredible that you have to sift through as to where when I when I started out there was hardly any information out there so it was trial and error on my own but when I opened up my first charting program that was on a, a DOS based computer at 286 AT&T and downloaded my data over a 2400 baud modem and started looking at charts e even that you know crude charting package from way back when had indicators in it so that's what we're exposed to and we think well this is how it's supposed to be done um, for me it wasn't you know but, but I, I spent a considerable amount of time trying to, to figure it out and you know keep it simple stupid you know turned on the, the light for me but there's, there's a lot involved with keep it simple stupid in the sense of you know how I explained it putting it all together you know into a trading plan and then of course the end result is you know turning it into money and that's when you deal with you know the emotional part right, of, of trading uh, you know following the plan and the money management and so on so um, 
it, it, obviously, you know, trading is, is a, and learning to do it is a pretty vast subject, and that's what education is is about because it speeds up that process rather than going it alone, um, as, as I did. I mean, there there were, you know, the snail mail types of advisory services when I first started out, um, and they 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 were a help. There were things that obviously to be learned there, but you know, it takes a long time, you know, so education, whether it's the markets or, or whether you're going to be a, a lawyer or whatever it might be. I mean, education is, is about speeding up the, the learning process and getting to your, your goal and it's what you, what you want to do. All right. Exactly. And then 90s were manual charting. You know, you'd even get a book in the mail with, with, with charts. It was a long time ago and you know what, um, you know, things have, have come a long way from, uh, let's say, uh, the caveman days of, of technical analysis and, and, and trading. Right. So I've heard the bell. Um, only Trading Pub, thank you. Thank you for inviting us here. I hope uh, those of you that, you know, enjoyed the presentation, they said, you know what, um, you know, come over to Pristine, uh, get into the community, check out our, our free services and, and free workshops and, and, and see if... Uh, you know, Christine is for you. All right. Have a great one, everybody. And any